Yo, what's good, everyone? It's your boy. Today's video, we got a guest upload from who I think is literally the Shadal God, baby. The Shadal Invo God. I've known him for a very long time. He is Karibo Overlord, my boy John Wilkin. He's going to be doing a guest upload here on one of the most underrated decks form at Shadal Dogma Invo. So, if you guys ready for this video, I want you to smash the subscribe button, smash the like button, go check out Karibo's channel down in the description below, and go check out tripgaming.com. For the absolute most beautiful play match you guys will ever see. Let's get straight into the video, boys. One of the best Texas format, Shadal Dogma Invoked. Let's go. Well, I really appreciate it, man. Um, so I'm here to talk about Shadal um, Invoked. Well, it's more like kind of... This list is kind of like Dogma Invoked. A little bit of Shadal. But um, it's what uh, I've seen a, bit, a lot of people playing. It's what I've been playing. I really like it. Uh, I'll just explain why I think it's really good and kind of the intricacies about it. So, um, to start, uh, 3 Alistair, 3 Ash, 3 Ecclesia, 2, uh, Fleur, 2 Maximus, and then the 2 Chanel Monsters. So, just, I think, like, the only reason why I play Ash as a hand trap is that, um, sometimes you just have a bit of a problem against prank kids, um, and it's also not that bad against every deck, like, it does something against every single deck. So, no matter what, it's going to be live. Which is, like, the best part about Ash. It's, like, very versatile. So, it's kind of cool like that. Um, and with with the Dogmaticas, is that with this deck, it's but it relies a lot on the Dogmaticas. It, it's really interesting. So, uh... The deck plays within the Invoke and the Shadal cards, but a lot of it is re reliant on the Maximus, which gets you uh, like into a Flur, gets you into your um, Schism, it gets uh, a Pop, it gets um, a yeah, it gets access to your Punishment if you have um, Ecclesia, like oh, sorry, like like in that sense, like Ash Dragon to summon Ecclesia. It's just it does some really cool stuff, and you're able to also dump like maybe the app clone um, if you want to get a pop or a, a triple DD crow um, like with Ariel. So I really like it for that. And with Floor and Ecclesia, it kind of just applies a lot of pressure. That's what it's mainly there for because it's kind of like similar to like the pure invoke decks that we saw a while back, but now with the Dogmaticas, well, not really now, but like. In that sense, like, with the Dogmaticus, it applies a lot of pressure really easily. Like, Alistair plus Nadir is an OTK, because you go, um, grab Mechaba, and then Nadir for Ecclesia, and Ecclesia into Floor, and that's game. Right, that's 8,500 right there. Um, so, it's really cool, and it kind of pro provides, like, an extra layer to the deck. But the main, like, the best part about this deck... In my opinion, and well, well, it's kind of correct, like, um, it, like objectively, is the spell cards. There are so many power spells, it's crazy. Like, you're able to just have so many good spells, like three Meltdown, three Prost, three Talents, three Dolphusion, three Droplet, three Nadir, and a lot of them do a lot of really good things. Like, it's really cool, in, in my opinion. So, um, with Droplet and Talents, it allows you to go second really well. And same with Shadal Fusion. Like, Shadal Fusion in this deck doesn't actually do much turn one. Um, it's really there for breaking boards going second. Um, and that, in combination with Meltdown, is really good. And I also added in the one Mystic Mine, because I got to 39. Um, and I think that, like, mine is pretty cool. Like, I've tested it out. I got recommended it, and I tested it out. Uh, you don't have to play that if you want. Uh, same with the Call by the Grave. Uh, but I, those are the two I prefer. Um, there's other options that you could play. Um, and then for the traps, two punishment and schism. Uh, so this is just a standard list. This is nothing like too crazy. Like it's just stuff like, like I, uh, I, I think that y you could also play like a heavier Shadal engine. Like we'll talk about that. Like, here, I'll show, uh, like, here. so like it looks something like this. So, uh, you could, you'd probably cut, uh, like these out. Uh, punishment isn't that great in that list. Um, but what it allows you to do is play these really good cards. 
like the Chanel cards. Really good. Like a heavier Chanel. Um, I would call, I love the El Chanel build. Um, I think it's really good. Uh, it probably looks something like this. This is just off the top of my head. Uh, I, I deleted the deck because I, I wasn't a big fan of it uh, in comparison to the other one. But um, this is something that actually that could be the same. This is like a heavier Shadal build. Um, so the benefits of this build compared to the other one um, is that it has a better, I guess, depth to it. It's more There's more depth and that's in a sense like you're able to have like shit all effects and all shit all things like like it allows you to do cool things but it also means that going second you're worse off and it's a bit less consistent so i value consistency um and uh just that ability to go second a little better against the combo decks in comparison to um this depth that the heavier Shadal list provides. Um, and then extra deck. Uh, so basically with uh, the extra, it's kind of just like Maximus targets, Shadal things, and then Alistair stuff. That's all. And so it's pretty standard from, if you've seen lists, like two op cologne. I like the second construct. So you can cut this if you guys want, but I really like two construct because it kind of allows you to dump one off Maximus if you need to get back uh, a Shadal fusion, um, and it lets you um, have a, a better grind game in certain matchups, especially because you're playing so many light monsters with all the Dogmatica stuff. Um, and other than that, this is just very very standard. This is for the Alistair package, and you don't play Artemis because you want a Almaz Grave for Maximus. Um, so, Purgatrio, uh, I just want to talk about that. Prankids is very, very popular. And so is Tri Brigade. Both of those decks have a very common fire monster. And that is uh, was it Fractal and Lampses. Summoning Purgatrio against both those decks is very powerful. It can attack everything, it can clear that their entire board, gains a bunch of attack, and does piercing, which means you could push for damage really easily. Also, against any matchup, if you have Ash or your opponent has any fire monster, but usually Ash, you're able to just summon it and it can clear whatever they could possibly have. But so I, I'm a big fan of it. Um, so the side deck, this is just like a standard side deck that I've created. Like it's not not like again with with, with these lists, you don't have to play these cards. Like this is just what I prefer. Um, but I really wanted to talk about kind of why I think that, again, why I think this deck is really good. Um, and it's because of the interaction it has with the side deck. So, well, this is just another reason. So, because of the way it's built, um, uh, in both both, vari both variations, um, so you're able to switch out cards really easily and play really powerful cards, and it works really well together. So, let's just take a look at um, uh, Droll, for example. Droll stops a bunch of decks turns but it doesn't fully just completely obliterate their board so for example like in like with droll like against dragon link they usually end on like at least something especially like if they want to push into it and then you're able to just shoot all fusion and kind of force them uh force out whatever they have or it like just completely steamroll them with stuff like el shadal fusion and uh, Meltdown, Nadir, Talents, um, and, and like, and Contact C as well. Um, you, okay, also, I want to mention one thing. In the side deck, I want powerful, um, this, is, this is more general as well, I want powerful monsters. Um, so, Contact C, Droll, and Nibiru are just like, they have a huge impact when they get played. Um, so... All these have the ability to end turns, like in a sense, right? Like some, like sometimes it doesn't end the turn, but that's fine because it's still really powerful. Like it, like for example, Contact C on Tri Brigade, they are still able to get like their setup, but like they can't make they can't make Appaloosa, like they can't make they usually don't have the Dragon Lords, 
And so it's really nice just to be like, bam, and then they don't have that monster interruption, and it stops Revolt, which is nice, because you're also able to have um, Shadal Fusion with that, and that, so Contact C plus Shadal Fusion is basically game. And, like, Meltdown as well, Talents, uh, Prosperity into those. Like, you can Prosperity for six in this deck. And that looks, like, through, like, basically, like, like your top 11 cards you're looking at, 12 if you're going second. That's insane. That's, like, a quarter of your deck looking for your power spells. And sometimes all you have to see is one, and it's game over. So I really like that. And and then you want some uh, spell trap removal. I really like that lineup. Um, so Reboot is iffy in this deck. And... That's the only thing that I, would, I personally would change in the side deck. Um, well, that I consider changing currently. Um, the problem is with Reboot is that sometimes this deck has a hard time killing through a board. Like like I said, you're able to make the Purger Shield sometimes, but a lot of the time it's not enough, and you kind of rely on breaking their board, which is very easy to do because you're able to have a bunch of beaters, but kind of killing might be a little hard. But then you end on like a Mechaba and a Winda, and that's just game. Especially if you've broken their board and they have minimal follow-up. Like, there's not much they can do. Um, and so, it, it, with this deck, it's the depth that I really like. Um, and it provides that with Shadal Shud Fusion. And in Shadal Fusion, in the other build I, was, I showed earlier, um, going second, it, 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 like I said, it's, it's the same situation for both of these. It just, you're able to do a lot with very little. That's what I really like with this. Lots of one and two card combos, like Alistair Nadir, Shadal Fusion going second, Prosperity into Nadir, like eh, Talents, Droplets, lots of really good cards that do a lot of stuff on their own. Like there isn't lots of dead, there isn't many dead cards in the deck. There's the Shadals, which can be dead, but, and that's really it. Like the rest is just almost all the time important, like impactful and important. Like there isn't a time where I'm like, damn, this card does absolutely nothing. Unless it's game one and it's not a good card for that matchup. Which is not very often. Because the cards that I have are usually generic. Except for maybe like Talents and Droplet. Those are the not really generic ones. But it, they, um, th that's like, sorry, not completely generic. But like, they are good against 90% of the decks. The only exception is like Eldritch. And, um, yeah, it's kind of annoying. So, um... Yeah, th th I think this deck's amazing. I think it's really good, this format, especially. I think that it's a very good sleeper deck. Um, and I think that people have to watch out, because Winda does a lot. Mechaba is also really good. And I feel that this deck has definitely been underrated so far. Um, I think people need to understand that although it sometimes has consistency issues, it's definitely a real contender. And I'm going to continue, probably continue working on the deck. Um, and I think that it's going to be... Uh, it's going to have some results. Uh, anyways, thank you so much for watching. This is Creepy Overlord signing out. Peace.